So we move into uh, the prophet Haggai, and this is uh, taking place kind of parallel to what happened uh, with Ezra, as we were hearing earlier in the week. So here's this prophet saying, okay, now you've come back from Babylon. You're now back in the land of Israel and Jer Jerusalem and Judea. And you set up your houses and you're it's talking about paneled houses. Isn't this so great? Everything you're, you're looking and you're living in opulence, but you're saying, oh, we, we don't have to build, rebuild the house of the Lord. Not yet. This is not the time. Saying, no, no, this is the time. Because the Lord is saying, you're finding all the things that you're going after, all the, all the pursuits of your life, they're coming up empty. You've sown much and brought in little. You've eaten, but you've not been satisfied. You've drunk and not been exhilarated. You've been clothed yourself, but not been warmed. Whoever earned wages earns them with a bag with holes in it. That everything you're seeking after is empty because you're not doing right worship. See, we're made to worship Almighty God. Every single one of us was made to worship. And a lot of times we try to fill that with something else, but ultimately it will leave us empty. Only worship of Almighty God will finally bring us that satisfaction and that fulfillment. And too often, after we, if we go after entertainment or food or whatever else, something that's a, a momentary pleasure, it's not going to satisfy that deepest longing in our hearts. So the Lord says, consider your ways, go up to the whole country, bring timber and build the house. Now, he's not saying, don't, don't take this in the way that St. Francis of Assisi said, my house is falling apart, oh, let's get a bunch of stones and rebuild this church. But he's saying, he said that to them, they had to do that. But for us, how do we rebuild true worship in our lives? What are the areas where the Lord is inviting us to worship Him, to put Him first, to put Him in the center of our lives. And we're saying, ooh, but this, or ooh, but that. And the Lord is saying, knock down those idols. You're finding that your life feels empty because you're not worshiping me rightly. So we come before our Lord who comes to us in the Blessed Sacrament today, who transforms us and He says, open your hearts. Do not just receive my Eucharist in your mouth, but receive me in your heart, to the center of your mind, your soul, your body, your whole being. May I be first. And then, and then you'll be satisfied. I'm thinking, uh, not yesterday, Tuesday night I went up to Plymouth State to do a talk about the Eucharist to um, the students there and started talking a little bit about sac Eucharist to sacrifice and all that and I had to explain to them what sacrifice making holy and I, I said to them, you know, what's something favorite to eat? And someone said, Girl Scout cookies. I says, what, what, what's your favorite type? Thin mints. I'm all over that. <laughs> And I said, you know, you look at someone like St. Therese of Lisieux and she says, to, sometimes instead of sacrificing, giving it up, sometimes it's a matter of, I'm going to eat this for the glory of God. Like St. Therese ate three grapes one time. It's recorded that she ate three grapes for the glory of God. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit. And she gave God great glory in that moment. And so doesn't mean that we have to reject all this stuff out of our lives, but how do we eat those thin mints that give glory to Almighty God? How do we do the things in our lives to be able to worship Him rightly, placing Him at the center and saying, Here, Lord, I offer this to you. May it give you glory. <laughs>